Number 55. Verify that the coin dropped by an airline passenger in the example 3.8 travels 144 meters horizontally while falling 1.5 meters in the frame of reference of the Earth. All right, so it basically says in that example, an airline passenger drops a coin while the plane is moving at 260 meters per second. Now that velocity you might be asking is relative to what? Well, this is the velocity of the airplane relative to the Earth. All right. So what is the velocity of the coin when it strikes the floor 150 meters below its point of release? And they only want us to focus now on letter B, measured relative to the Earth. All right. So uh, what we need to first figure out, um, here's the drawing. The plane's moving 260 meters per second relative to the Earth. The coin on the plane is going to drop only 1.5 meters. All right. But in relative to the Earth, we want to find now the total, essentially, uh, the total horizontal distance it traveled. All right, so this is really the uh, question here. All right, so in order to do so, first let's calculate the time that the, um, what, what did they drop, a coin, is in the air. Okay, so let's calculate T. Okay, so we're going to have to do this in the Y frame. So let's start talking about uh, things that we know. Here's the initial part of the problem. All right, the initial point, and here's the final point. So what's the initial velocity of this coin in the Y direction? Well, it's zero, right? It's not moving up or down. It's moving purely horizontally. So that's easy. What's the final velocity of the coin in the Y direction? Well, we don't know. Good. Um, what's the acceleration in the Y direction for this problem? Well, it's free fall, so it's negative 9.80 meters per second squared. And what's the displacement that the coin will fall in the Y direction? Now, careful, the sign's important. It's negative 1.50 meters, right? Start high and low, always going to be negative, okay? So now, uh, taking a step back, how can we solve this? Well, I'm looking for time. I know the initial acceleration, and I also know the displacement. So it looks like we'll use equation number two here, okay? So let's set it up. So the change in y instead of x will be the initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. So here we have negative 1.50 is going to equal zero, right? Because that whole term goes to zero because the initial velocity in the y is zero. Plus then one half times negative 9.80 times t squared. So it looks like we have negative 1.50 is equal to negative 4.90 t squared. Simply divide out the 4.90 from both sides. And now we'll have t squared is equal to is equal to, let's see, 1.5 divided by 4.9. Remember, it's going to be positive because you're dividing two negatives. So it's going to be 0 0.306. Now you have to take the square root to get rid of the square. So time will be now. Remember, anytime you take the square root, you always get a positive and negative answer. Okay. Only one of them we will accept because only one of them is going to make sense in this problem. So we get a value of 0 0.553. So five, five, three seconds. One of them makes sense, only the positive answer. We can't have negative time because we're assuming that the time starts at zero. So we're not counting back in time. So it's just positive. So just erase these signs. Okay, so that's the time. All right, perfect. Now, knowing that time, I can now use this time, because remember, this isn't necessarily a Y time, nor an X time, it's just time and time knows no x or y coordinate. So this is now the time I'm gonna use to calculate now my x distance here, okay? So let's talk about things we know in the x direction. So we know that the uh, velocity in the x direction is going to be 260, right? Meters per second, because that's what it is, All right? That's the initial velocity. It'll be the final velocity also. Why? I, I can even put these in here. They're all gonna be the same. Why is this the case? Why are they all the same? Because of this fact, the acceleration, I said initial, oops, see, going too fast, guys. I put in the Y there. So the final velocity in the X frame, that's that. Uh, the fact is this, the acceleration in the X frame is zero. Therefore, the final is the same as the initial, which is the same as basically just the average, okay? And now we're looking for um, x, or the x displacement, that's our question, 
And we do know that the time the object is in the air is 0 0.553 seconds. All right, so we can just basically from here do a very simple average velocity calculation is equal to displacement over time. So the velocity is going to be 260, right? Uh, let's see. Okay, cool. Sorry, 260. I was just checking one thing, making sure. And yep, 260. That will equal then the x displacement over now 0 0.553. And now x will be equal to, so 260 times 0.553. So we get 143.7. And if we round that appropriately, considering three significant figures, guess what we come out with? 144 meters. And it says verify that the coin dropped by the airline passenger in that example travels 144 meters horizontally, blah, blah, blah. And we just did it. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Uh, please remember to subscribe and um, I will see you in the next lesson.